Welcome to the UK Me class for Molecular Genetics review of the Tissue Eye Pilot Run 3 Colorectal Cancer Cases. We have two of our expert panel members present who are going to review the cases with you. And we have Dr. Perry Maxwell from Belfast and we have Dr. Jane Moorhead from King's College Hospital in London. So I'm now going to pass you over to Perry and Jane and we can discuss the cases. Perry? Thank you very much, Sandy. Um, this is the first case, which is the benchmark case, which is showing the annotated area. There we go. And this is uh, the benchmark case, which suggests to the participants then an area for uh, which has been annotated for microdissection, and we invite the participants then to comment on the percentage of tumour and the cellularity. So the area, as you can can see, has been marked. Um, from a clinical history point of view, it was a 75-year-old male with a PT3M2 tumour on resection, and the sub submitted sample for molecular analysis. And we can see here that the area for microdissection has been identified along this portion. Now, it's interesting that there are other areas of tumour which have not been included. And I think that the reason for this is that the tissue density or the tumour density is highest in this area as opposed to these areas which have more stroma and perhaps background cells. So I think this is why this area was highlighted for microdissection. If we then look at the percentage of tumour as a result of this proposed microdissection, the group of experts have gone for between 41 and 50 percent. Now, if you look at the background, it is there is a high uh, inflammatory infiltrate scattered throughout. So uh, this is never going to be more than 50 percent. As we've already noted on the lower par, if we yeah. compare it with other areas, it's, the tumour is in higher density along here. So I think this is why the experts went for between 40 and 50 percent. Jane, any comment? No, I'd agree. Um, just to say that the um, areas of tumour below the area marked wouldn't be worth taking because you'd be diluting it out further, so it would fall below the 41 percent. Exactly. So I think that getting the areas of the highest tumour content is the way to go as a rule of thumb. So if we then look for cellularity, remember the cellularity gives us an indication of the starting DNA for any downstream analysis. The expert panel decided that obviously with this amount of cellularity, it would be high tumour content. I remember we we're estimating that there would be 10, 5 micrometer sections being submitted for analysis. So we would suggest that this is high cellularity. Jean? I'd agree totally, um, bearing in mind it's a resection as well, so we've got bigger surface area. So that adds to the um, cellularity, obviously. Okay. Thank you. It's a benchmark case. Uh, if we mark, go on to case number one. So the case history of case one is a 76-year-old female with moderately differentiated carcinoma on biopsy. Uh, and the sample from the surgical site was submitted for molecular testing. However, if we look at the material, there is no tumor content on lower bar. And if we look along the mucosa, this is to all intents and purposes non-malignant with muscle yeah. and cutaneous tissue here. So no yeah. tumor content. We look along area of inflammation. Yes. Yeah. Lymphoid tissue. Inflamed mucosa. 
mucosa with no suggestion of any tumor content either within the mucosa or outside of the muscle there or here, the submucosa. So this would be not suitable for molecular analysis. Jane? No, I'd agree with everything you said, Perry. Okay, so case two. Case two is a surgical resection of a poorly differentiated adenocarcinoma. PT3, N2, M1. So the sam representative sample from the tumor is submitted for molecular analysis. Now it's noted that we've, on the clinical history, the resection margins were free of tumor. And we can see here a lot of essentially normal mucosa. And so immediately for annotation purposes for microdissection, we would be looking to exclude the normal mucosa. Also in this area, we have a highly inflammatory response. So we would be looking to annotate the bulk of the tumor in this area. Just go to a lower power. And we would be looking to take the bulk of this tumor area, whether it would be in an area of sm smaller portion or all of this area. A lot of participants would have selected either a smaller portion or a larger portion of this tumor area. However, for that sort of area microdissection and annotation, the experts suggested a tumor content of between 21 and 30%. And I think that's why the reason for that is the dispersal of the tumor and the presence of inflammatory cells between the tumor nests. <coughs> Therefore, it's between 21 and 30 percent. Jane? Yep, I'd agree, Perry. Um, I think the tumor islands make up a smaller total surface area, and also the cells are quite large compared to the surrounding normal cells or non-malignant cells, I should say. So nothing more to add on the tumor content. OK, then the next consideration is the cellularity. So we have to consider that the assumption is that there would be 10 5 micrometer sections being submitted for analysis, which means that for a, a large piece with such a uh, numbers of cells and large cells, the experts judged this to be very high in cell content. Jane? Yeah, it's, it's quite a, a large piece of tumor, so inevitably it's going to be at the very high to very high end, and bearing in mind the size and the cellularity is very high, we feel. OK, moving on. Then to case three. Jim, would you like to take us through this one? The uh, case history was a 61-year-old female with unexplained weight loss of more than 4.9 kilos in the last two hours with uh, an FOB positive. It was a resection of colonic adenocarcinoma. And this was submitted for molecular testing because they're now considering anti-EGFR therapy. Jane? We can see this is a, a section of the resected bowel with the um, muscle areas and a little bit of normal mucosa on the top. Yeah. And the tumor is there in the central portion. Uh, nest embedded there with looks like a slightly alterated surface. So on a higher power, so we, on a higher power, Harry? Yes, I'm uh, just, uh, oh, sorry. just trying to catch up. There we go. Thank you. Um, we can see there's quite a bit of inflammatory response. And next to the tumor cells, they're embedded in a desmoplastic reaction. 
So overall, we felt that um, the tumour content was relatively low, 1 to 10%, because of the dysplasia and, and the inflammation. Harry? Yeah, the, the, the area for micro dissection is, as you say, in this general area here is indicated on the thumbnail. Um, going down, it's in this general area. So, so her being so slow on the uh, annotation there. So this would be the area. So we can see, that, as Jane has suggested, um, a tumor content. Go ahead, Jim. Uh, yeah, you're going to be removing those um, lymphocytes on the left-hand side of the screen and going for that area in the main. Um, as we said, it, it's one to ten percent we felt, and the overall cellularity, however, because there's a fairly big area and it could be enriched a fair bit, we felt the overall cellularity on the ten by five or five by ten sections would be high. Next one, Perry, is that anything okay. more to add? No, no, that, that sounds grand. So case Thanks. four. Case four was a 63-year-old male with large tumor and transverse colon with clinical evidence of lung metastasis no, no. on resection of PT4 into M1 adenocarcinoma submitted for molecular analysis. Right, so here we have quite a, a large section again with the tumor invading right down through the muscle. As far as I can see on this low power to the bottom section almost. So on higher power though, we can see that the tumor cells are fairly dispersed throughout this main region that's highlighted in the thumbnail. So moving around, it would be ideal to find an area that's a bit more dense on tumor cells, um, possibly near the top there. Although then we come into the problem of um, lymphocytes and vessels. So this, this will be quite hard to actually mark up the best area. It might be a sort of case where you'd want to take a few different areas and remove other areas. Perry? Yes, this is going to be very difficult to micro-dissect. And I think that uh, we're, we're agreed that it's, it's this general area for consideration and really we would expect variants uh, from participants in and around. Some would take the larger area, some would take smaller areas, and really, obviously, if you were focusing on a smaller area, that's then going to try to enrich, uh, both for the, well, for the tumor content, certainly. So, but I don't really see any area, Jane, do you agree? There's no real area of focus, focus for this? No, it would be really hard, and I think because of that we came up with the 1 to 10% on the tumor yeah. content, because inevitably it's going to be fairly diluted out with non-malignant cells wherever you take it. Possibly avoid the, um, the muscle layers, which are whether the tumor is even more dispersed throughout. Exactly, yeah, it's down, down here. Yeah. Then going on to the cellularity, because it is such a, a large area and widely dispersed tumor, we felt it would be very high despite the low tumor content. So it should be possible to enrich um, the most downstream processes, but some technologies obviously you wouldn't get the 40% that's required for, for whole genome sequencing, for instance. Harry? Yes, the cellularity is going to be really dependent upon your um, area of micro dissection and I think it, it, it would you, you could go for the larger piece or a smaller piece and still get high to very high um, yeah. because again it's a resection again assuming the 10 by 5 micrometer sections so yeah that would be the case for that okay Jim thanks very much Terry Over to Sandy also
thank you very much, both of you, Terry and Jane, and of course, Heather from Philip for helping and driving this WebEx. So hopefully you found this a um, helpful exercise, and we hope you continue to participate in the UK class Tissue Eye Colorectal Cancer EQA scheme. Thank you. Bye-bye.